Ooh, doesn't that look great? Yes, coffee. I love coffee. I'm outside the Shoal Hill Tavern waiting for my guest today because we will be doing the energy and star sign readings today from uh, somewhere outside at least. And um, my guest will be my friend and fellow psychic medium Jane Arnold. So it's coming up right now. Hello. Change Hi. of mind. <laughs> Change of heart, so to speak. It was a bit cold outside, so we decided to do the reading indoors. Mm. Much nicer. We had to close the bloody window because the council is outside making much noises. So, you know, everything seems uh, to, to go against us, but we don't bloody care. And we get <laughs> coffee. And we get coffee. So anyway, Jane, very welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. So what we do is we obviously, before we go into the star signs, we look at the energy of the week. And the week we're looking at is the week of September the 7th to the 13th. You can probably see wherever you are that the the, um, the the screen is going darker and brighter. That's because we have that window open. But it's very depressing if they actually close the whole thing. Right? So so um, if it just looks like it's a bit out of focus at times. See, when I go forward, it, it goes out of focus. So you decide. Um, we're going to close the curtains now. Right? Bear with us. Here we go. Here we go. So, what say you? Better? That's better, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, shall we start finally? <laughs> so, the week we're looking at, like I said, is the week of September the 7th to the 13th. Here we go. Let's look at the overall energy for the week ahead. We have the Wolverine and the Bobcat, which means this is not a week for anyone to make any big decisions in a in an aggressive manner, in a forceful manner, because you have the Wolverine, which means it's an animal that is still evolving. Um, so you're not quite sure where you're going, or energetically speaking, we're not quite sure what's going to happen. So let's take our time. And we have the Bobcat, which is an animal that needs a bit of a um, vantage point from which to see the world. So in other words, the week of September the 7th to the 13th is much better for all of us if we actually go into detaching ourselves a little and look at it from a different point of view, from a higher point of view, and observe before we just go in there, you know, guns blazing, if that makes sense. The good thing is, because we have the Wolverine and the Bobcat, um, which are minor predators, they're not super aggressive beings um, by default, um, there's also no need to, uh, to show your teeth and to be super aggressive because when you have a vantage point you will notice who causes the issues. So this is a week of being a bit more detached from things and observe if that makes sense. right? And we will now go into the star signs because obviously I'm sure that some of you out there need to make some decisions. What they're really saying to you is whatever is coming up. Always remember that the overall energy is to Look at the vantage point first, right? So we're starting with the first star sign, with the star sign we're in, which is Virgo. Here we go. Okay. So the two cards we have for Virgo. Let your past go and joy. This is indicating to me um, that for you Virgos, don't keep looking back at what's gone on in your past, what you've been through because it's pulling your energies down, it's stopping you looking forwards, it's stopping you enjoying life, and hence the joy card next to it. There's a lot more joy for you to come, uh, Virgos, in this next week, if only you'd lay the past to bed. So just think of it um, as a box, put the lid on that box and move forward, and there's a lot of joy there and happiness that's going to come for you in the next week, if you can do that. Perfect. Now we're going into Libra. Let's have a look what we got for Libra. We have the raccoon and the moose. For Libras, that means you adopt, you will adopt the situations very, very well. Sometimes you adopt too well. So if you wear different hats every time the situation changes, you might be too supportive, if that makes sense. So what the guides are saying is, 
This week, 7th of September to the 13th of September, the week we're looking at. Be yourself, look at your needs, and you have the moose, which is an animal with antlers. Sometimes you can't see it's obviously too far away. Anyway, anytime there's an animal with antlers, it means you're actually fully protected, right? So you have the right to say like, no, I come first this week and do just that. And the moose um, is an animal that um, has what is called a split hoof. Sounds a bit like, it looks a bit like the Star Trek thing. So <laughs> as the, the, the terrain gets different or difficult, um, and, and so the, the moose isn't sinking in. So what the message is, you are looking at your needs first. You are fully protected by, by stating what you feel you need in your life and you want to do. And you will be fine because the moose doesn't sink in just because things get difficult. Right? So that's the Libra going into Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio. Um, we have energy work and what do you desire? Um, for this next week, I feel that life's a little bit of a hard slog at the moment. Um, it seems to be you're getting up, going to work or getting up and doing your daily chores. Everything seems hard work. It seems a slog. There seems to be a, a depleted energy around Scorpios at the moment. Um, and I, and I, I feel we just need to to change that a little bit by putting some thoughts out there of what it is that you want in life yourself rather than just keep um, I'm just seeing a treadmill it's like you keep going on this treadmill and moving on this treadmill without thinking what do I want what where do I want to be this week what do I want to do this week so I just feel if you can put a little bit more thought in what it is that you want rather than just going along with the flow and along with everything that everybody wants you to do or what you have to do every day. It will help your week um, to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more cheerful. Okay, and as you notice, and I say that every time we're recording uh, an episode, there seems to be overlapping energy that sort of go from one star sign to the next. Mm -hmm. So this is the second time thus far that we've heard about making sure that you look at what it is you deserve yeah. and you, you require. So well, now we're going to Sagittarius. Let's have a look. Drawn to a different deck. We have the Raven and the Eagle. What they're saying to Sagittarius is, you are quite ingenious. So look at how clever you actually are. And if people tell you that you can't do this, don't do what I do now. <laughs> right? You just... It's time that you believe that you can do things without outside influence. You don't need people to tell you that you can do this. It has to come from within. And sometimes people are nice, but they advise from their point of view. And you are a unique being. And sometimes you need to trust yourself. So the raven is the animal of, like the crow, very related in the, in the, in the animal kingdom. So they are animals of transformation. And the raven is also an animal of renewal. So what they're asking you to renew is the trust that you are enough. Okay? Because the next animal you have is the eagle. Which means the eagle sees his food from a mile away which means opportunities can come to you and you will see them manifest in front of your eyes, not necessarily all in the next week, if that makes sense, because the next week or the week for the 7th of September to the 13th is about you beginning to realize that you're good enough. Here's what that means. If you feel like I'm a bit stuck, I always wanted to do this or this is inside me, you know, um, let's just keep it, let's just say spiritually, you say like, you know what, I always wanted to do readings, I always wanted to, to do uh, workshops and um, everything seems to be locked down still, right? You can still Google, you can still try and talk and communicate to people what is out there, what can I do within the confinements of this bloody 2020 we're living in. And once you send the energy to what it is you want, the energy will find you there. That's what I always say to people when they go part-time, for instance, and then they wonder why the new venture doesn't quite work. Yes, we all sort of need to make a living, but normally when you divide your time and you have one thing that you don't really like, 
you don't give enough you don't give enough energy to the thing you do like and so this is the week for for Sagittarius to say like I'm enough and I'm gonna look at what I want to do and begin to manifest right okay and now we're going into Capricorn it's definitely an overall theme yeah and always the yeah yeah Oh, there you Again. go. <laughs> Again. Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn, we have be honest with yourself and um, what do you desire again, which is choices and decisions. Um, I feel the way that we're going with Capricorns here, um, there is a little bit, this is to do, I feel, with personal relationships more so. This can be relationships with your partner or relationships with family members and friends, but um, I do feel it's more on a personal front than a work front. Um, but it's very much um, you needing to look inside yourself again of what it is that you want, and that the, the theme is is yeah. quite ironic. It's, it's for quite. This week. It's, it's actually when I do this, I always notice yeah. that because that's why I do the. That's the reason why I do the over energy. Yeah. Because I used to do not. I used not to do uh, the over energy, and then I noticed there is a theme that goes through this period of time it's and, ironic, it, and, it? Yeah, and it affects yeah. people differently and it, you know you know they saw me shuffle the cards as well and yeah. choose them but yeah um but yeah it, it's very much about looking into yourself looking at your life um so th there's a lot of um introspect going on here this week um definitely with with capricorns and looking at the areas of your life and what it is that you're not happy with what it is that you'd like to change what it is that you have a feeling of people moving out of your life as well as people moving in as well. So I feel that some people need to go for fresh people to come in. So it's very much don't hold on to people in your lives that aren't, it sounds a bit harsh, but aren't serving your purpose anymore or aren't bringing to, to your world what you need. Um, but it's very much that you've got to make them choices and decisions. And I feel if you keep holding on to people because you don't want to make these choices, um, it's just going to keep going around until you do. So this week will be a really good week for you to look at yourself, look at your life and look at them changes to make them. Okay, okay. that was Capricorn going into Aquarius. I can't help it. This is the age of Aquarius. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, luckily, there's not. Song. Luckily, there's not. A, there isn't a song for each star sign. <laughs> we don't probably be silly we enough. One. We could. We could. <laughs> Let's work on that. Yeah. So Aquarius, you have the grey fox and the jaguar. The grey fox, all foxes denote the fact that you are a very, very old soul, and you need to remember that. And this sounds like a cliche, and there's also Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek music. <laughs> I don't know why I talk about Star Trek. Really, um, <laughs> on my mind, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, of of memes on 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 Facebook that basically um um say um you know um you're an old soul and you have survived all of your worst days so far, and, and, and it sounds like a cliche, but this is really what the universe is saying to you. You have the gray fox, so what the guides are saying to you is, you have been here before. You also have been in the same situation, at least emotionally, that you, that you find yourself in now when you actually reflect on it. But, because the fox is also very cunning, you are clever enough to realize that there needs to be changes. And you have the jaguar, this little guy here, which is an animal that has unique dots. No two jaguars look alike. So what they're saying is, trust your, your uniqueness, the, the inability for a, a lot of Aquarius out there to not really fit in, to not really feel like you belong, is actually not a negative thing. It just feels negative because you are sometimes the one on the outside. But what the guides are saying is actually your, your uniqueness that also allows you to make decisions that allow you or lead to a life that you really want that some other people just can't even uh, imagine right so remember you're an old soul and no matter what life throws at you you've gotten through worse and you will get through this again right there was a glorious going into pisces my favorite star sign because i'm a pisces let's see what we got for 
Pisces. Guess what? I'm Pisces too. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> so it's ours. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's this have is going to be interesting. Oh dear. <laughs> are we going to have the same theme or are we going to have a we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Wow. Right. Release and surrender and focus on service for Pisces. Okay. What this is, this is making me feel for Pisces. It's very much about um, not holding on to things letting things go, releasing anything around you a little bit again of what's not needed, what's being served in your life, what um, isn't helping you in your life because you're holding on to things too tightly. We need to let things go to let new things come in again, okay? Um, there's challenges out there that, and there has been challenges and there will be some more challenges out there, but I just feel that it's actually you're dealing with them now. You're letting them go. You're letting things so that you can move forward with life. Um, and this, the focus on service is very much for me about focusing on, on work as well, particularly work that you enjoy, work that is needed to be done. So there's a little bit of spirituality that's going on around this as well. And I feel I can see lots of sprinkles, spiritual sprinkles going on at the moment with people, um, helping them to, to move forward in all these areas of their life as well to bring in the joy, to bring in the bliss um, and to improve things in all the areas that you want. So just put your focus there on where you want the improvements, where you'd like them to be. And I, I feel spiritually they will help you with that. Perfect. So that doesn't sound close. too bad. Yeah. yeah. So Aries, let's have a look at Aries. You have the mule deer and the, the river otter. Again, this is a week to not make any rush decisions. Don't do anything too forceful. Don't make anything in the state of frustration or when you feel pissed off is the word. <laughs> no, seriously, you know, yeah. what they're saying, you have to mule deer. So by default, a deer functions best at sunrise and sunset. And um, when they're chased during the day, they, they are quite skittish. And so that's the analogy that the guys are saying to you. If there's so much going on in your life that you feel like, you know, you always have to do something, that's exactly what distracts you from the things you, you want to do or you ought to think about. So what the guides are saying is, because you have the mood here, is step back a little. That doesn't mean you have to be up at sunrise and go to bed at sunset. What they're saying is, you need to make sure that you rest enough and with a restful mind. Mm. That's how you manifest and create, and this is the word I'm getting from the guides, a better future. That does not mean uh, that we're super uh, assumptions here and think that all Aries have, a, have a, a, a bloody difficult life. But what the guides are saying is things can always improve. And here's the other advice. You have the river otter. And the otter is an animal that is holding hands with each other as they fall asleep. So, and the analogy is that you do not have to burn any bridges this week. But if you are calmer and you kind of look at things, you can give people a choice, right? You either change or you're gone, if that makes sense. Sounds a bit harsh. But that's sort of what I'm getting, is for you to, to come to the understanding that sometimes people hold you back. You know, and people are not necessarily bad people. I always say that when I do readings to people, if you cooked for me five times a week, I let you, mm. right? People become opportunists. And if you give too much, they will always take. And if you then say, look, you know, there's more to my life, they will feel rejected. That's just the nature of things. And all the guides are saying is, do not worry about giving people the feeling you reject them because this is all about you looking at what you came here for if that makes sense so certainly we have a lot of overlapping energy but for aries don't be aggressive don't be impulsive because the river otter tells you not to burn any bridges but to be observant 
this week. Okay, week of September the 7th to the 13th. Now going into Taurus. So, let's have a look for you, Taurians. Or oh, is that how you call it? I always say Tauruses, don't I? Thomas, Bloody again. foreigner. What did you say again? Again. Wow. Again. She probably has a set with two cards in it. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you. Look, no, I know. I'm they're just all messing. different. I'm just, I'm just messing. I just can't believe no, this it's just, it's again. just. <laughs> it's, to be fair, it's not that uncommon. In the beginning, because I've been doing the, these readings now online for yeah. about three years. And in the beginning, I was like, is this a deja vu? Yeah. yeah, or you know, deja vu as you say over here, and um, and and it's not. There's an overlapping. I energy. think this new moon is yeah. sorting things out and sorting people out, and yeah. I think that's what's going on in this next week. Now the new moon um, has affected the energies for us all for change. Um, we have the what do you desire card again, which is choices, decisions, um, but also I have fresh air with this as well. So um, okay, for you Taurians. Um, it's choices and decisions with you, but I do feel there's some opportunities coming this week um, for you, Taurians. Um, and there's a choice and a decision to make with the opportunity that's coming. So if there's a job that you're you're looking for, I do feel there's a, a specific tailoring to this. It's not just an overall pattern. If there's a job that you want to go for um, or a, a career or are you deciding to go back to education? Um, I feel it's within the, those themes. And there's definitely a choice and decision there. Um, what I want to say to you is that um, go with your heart's desire. That's really important. Go with what's in your heart, what it is that you really want to do, not what people tell you to do or what you feel you should be doing. Go with your heart's desire on this. And the fresh air, this is very much about um, you need to get out, you need to get out, get about get some walks, get into nature. I feel confined. I feel as though I've been in too long. Um, I'm not just talking about COVID, I'm talking about uh, within yourself as well. This confinement, this uh, again, going along with what people have wanted you to do. This is both these cards together are telling me that you need to branch out with yourself and with it, with it what you want to do. And it's very much, um, I'm like opening doors, opening windows. But that's metaphorical for you, opening up and letting the daylight in and seeing things the way they should be seen. So, actually a nice week for yeah. Taurians. Taurians. I thought it was Tauruses. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Lovely foreigner. Anyway, so let's go into Gemini. I'm drawn to a different deck. Here we go. Right. Okay. It's going to be a very personal week for Geminis. Geminis? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> because you have the elephant and the crocodile. The elephant is the typical analogy is that you remember everything. And sometimes thinking that things that have happened can only repeat themselves is actually not true. Because if something happened to you, you are now a different person, so you would make different choices. So the analogy that I would sort of say, if... if, if, if Sounds a bit stupid, but if someone comes at you with a baseball bat and hits you over the head the first time, the second time you would remember to put your arm up. Mm. So if the situation would, would come again, you either leg it or you put your arm up and you're more aware, if that makes sense. So what the guys are basically saying to you that sometimes your memories of, oh my God, I've been in that situation before, can cause you to overreact or stop trusting. Here's what I noticed about the, the universe and the guides. If there's something you need to learn, and let's just say in a relationship, because I feel this is very personal here. So in a relationship and you, you end the relationship for whatever reason, and then um, you haven't learned certain things or you haven't worked on the trauma that a previous relationship may have caused, the universe has no other choice than sending you a new girl or a new fella with some of these traits that cause this so you can begin to work on it if that makes sense mm -hmm. so you're never going from a totally shitty experience to wow if that makes sense there have to be steps in between and i'm not getting anything super negative here all the guides are saying is watch your thought patterns you know when you talk about situations 
just because it happened in that fashion once. Yes, it's good to kind of say, I've seen this before, but already being aware that you've seen this before doesn't set you up for the same outcome because you're aware. And you have the crocodile. Now, this is about self-esteem. The crocodile, the only reason why we always just see the crocodile on TV uh, tearing other animals apart is because that's what makes the ratings. They're massive beasts and that's what people think they do. When in the in, 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 in shamanic world, Native American symbolism, the crocodile is revered because he can bring nine little crocodiles in the pouch of his mouth and bring them to safety. So what that means is you have a very caring side to you and a very loving side and whatever you feel belongs to you is part of your unit. You will protect sometimes ferociously and sometimes people only see the, the negative sides and the, 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 the less beautiful sides in you and you need to remember your self-worth. Really, really important. So it feels like energetically for, for, for Gemini's it's not going to be a super high energy week. If that makes sense. It's going to be more a week where the universe is trying to show you that sometimes you set yourself up for problems because you overthink and you remember too many things that are not even in the air at the moment. And the crocodile is basically telling you, love yourself. Begin to love yourself. Easier said than done. But that's the message for, for Gemini. Yeah. Going into Cancerians. Oh, you got that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Oh, God, it's a new card. Okay, Cancerians. Um, perfect timing and relationship card. Um, okay, so Cancerians, what's going on now at the moment with you is um, I feel, um, the energy feels very much to me about um, been sitting, been waiting, it's sort of waiting for things to happen, waiting for the time to be right, um, just pondering on things. And I'm getting now, now is the time, perfect time for you to make the move on things that you want to do. Um, so doors are opening now because I can see doors opening, I can see change. It's actually a really quite a positive card. This is for Cancerians. Um, it feels a really good, uplifted energy for you as well. So for all those things that you want to do, um, be it new hobbies, new crafts, um, I want to say booking booking breaks, but obviously we've got to be a little bit careful there, but all these things that you've been waiting and wanting, etc., it's now's the time, put your plans in action, get out there um, and to do those things as well, because it's really, really a positive card. The relationship card next to it, um, this feels a little bit, it's, it's been somebody that's been in a little bit of a dark place, um, a little bit of a dark mood, dark time. So it could be somebody, you know, you've had, you know, a little bit of dark cloud over you recently as well. Um, and it's like this positive card next to it is going to bring you out of that dark space and that dark time and lift your life and make things a lot brighter for you. Um, but I just feel that, again, I feel I want to say they need to love themselves mm -hmm. a little bit with this as well and be kind to themselves a little bit because life's not been all that kind to everybody this year and I feel we've learned some hard lessons and had some hard knocks as well. So just know that this is a really good time for you now to move forward, to get on and to enjoy life but put those plans in action. Don't sit and wait for perfect times. The time is perfect now. Okay, that was Cancerians going into Leo, our last star sign of the week. We've been looking at the week of September the 7th to the 13th, 2020. Final star sign for today, here is Leo. You have the badger and the turtle. And that's interesting in the sense that the badger is an animal that by default stands for being misunderstood. Right? Um, it's, it's symbolism. But what the guides are saying to you is, if things feel a bit stuck. It's pointless to continuously explain yourself or explain situations to others. Uh, it's pointless. They're not going to listen differently than they did before. Right? And here's the, maybe the downside, maybe not, depends on where you're at in your own life, but you have the turtle, which means two things. Number one, 
you are, just like the fox, a very old soul and you've, you've been through worse and you will get through this, but you cannot rush anything. We had that earlier. Don't make any rush decisions for, for Leos this week. Really, really important. Stick to your guns. That's important. That's sort of the badger for you. Stick to your guns. Um, believe in yourself. But first and foremost, take your time. This is not the week to make big decisions of saying, well, and I'm, I'm moving there and I'm doing this job and I'm letting this go. Um, this has to be all slowly done, if that makes sense. Nothing, nothing, nothing should be done in a, in a hurry, if that makes sense. Right? That's all I got for Leo's. That's all we got for this week. Jane, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. That was it. good fun. Yeah. And see you all very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.